Welcome to the afternoon session, session 4A, uh, undergraduate collaborations. I thought I'd take advantage of my time to say a little bit about um, my experiences with Alex. Uh, my name's Jim Babb. I joined as, a, as the first postdoc at ITAMP and um, joined the group that consisted of Meng Du, Bernard Zeigelman, uh, Steve Lepp, Tool Pradhan, Ron Friedman, uh, Brendan, McLaughlin, uh, George Victor, and Kate at the time. And uh, even though Alex was very busy at the time and perhaps soon to be busier, I think, taking on the, the ITAMP responsibilities, uh, I, I benefited from the, his door always being open, even late at night. Um, I uh, came with some mutual interests in long range forces, which I had picked up with my thesis advisor, Larry Spruck, but uh, rapidly found myself. Um, drawn into molecules with Alex. I didn't cut my teeth uh, the same way um, maybe many of you did, which is on radiative association. Uh, in fact, I'm not going to talk about radiative association because at a symposium in honor of Alex, with Alex present, you know, 50 percent of the world's expertise is here, and that's not counting the rest of us. So. Um, I thought I would talk about another molecule that we worked on, which was the hydrogen molecular ion. And uh, Gordon Drake had talked a little bit about some of the progress. Um, but I want to talk about a different aspect, which is the hyperfine structure of the hydrogen molecular ion, which I got into uh, through Alex's introduction. And this will be just a very fast presentation. Uh, I don't know if you could even call the talk as a, a skim or something. Um, the hyperfine structure H2 plus is, is a lot different than the hydrogen atom, which Bernard Ziegelman talked about a little bit. Um, I'll talk a little bit about that, some measurements in H2 plus calculations, and the deuterium molecular ion. There's been a lot of progress in work on H2 plus precision work. Gordon talked about some of the aspects. Um, things started out really in the Born Oppenheimer picture, which Alex had worked on with Bates and others, um, and rapidly progressed to adiabatic approaches, which he had worked on with McCarroll, uh, non-adiabatic approaches, and even now in the modern era, uh, there's work on full variational approaches, such as was talked about by Gordon, work by Yan, Zongchao Yan, Gordon Drake, Korobov, and others. But even still, things go on. Um, is relativistic approaches using the Dirac equation, uh, bright poly approximation approaches, which are also good for relativity and are accurate to order alpha squared, Rydberg, and even further need for radiative corrections, which are being looked at as we speak in higher terms. The hyperfine interaction H2 plus is, is uh, of fundamental interest and has been studied over, over many decades. Um, and it's very similar to the hydrogen molecule. However, there's a fundamental difference, which is H2 is diamagnetic, while H2 plus is paramagnetic. And that will have some implications for precision work, as we'll see. As Bernard showed, and the hydrogen atom has a very precise experimental value uh, obtained with the maser at the CFA for the hyperfine transition frequency. The theoretical status is not as good, but it's still pretty precise. You can do pretty well, as Bernard mentioned, with the Fermi contact interaction, which, and then even better if you include a, a naive correction, which is the reduced uh, mass effect between the proton and the electron. And just including this factor, which is called kappa in the business, uh, brings you down to 1420.486. So you're only 80, 80 kilohertz away from experiment. And then QED and hadronic corrections and, and things, which are challenging and are done by uh, people like Saperstein and Pachuki and others, can bring you down to this uh, best theory value, which is down to 2 kilohertz uh, uncertainty. The situation for H2 plus is a lot worse, but there is some experimental data, nothing like the Maser result for hydrogen. Particularly the Daymelk group in the 60s. Um, some energy levels at the 3 kilohertz level, accuracy using an RF Paul trap. But this was for excited uh, vibrational states in H2 plus. 
Uh, later, the Carrington group, uh, which I don't think is, is continuing these experiments, uh, had done some highly excited vibrational states. And then there was an interesting experiment uh, done by Lundin and collaborators where they looked at the Rydberg hydrogen molecule. That's, that's an H2 plus with an electron in a high orbit. And they can unravel all this complicated structure and obtain a value for the hyperfine structure. Gordon had mentioned the polarizability. This is a separate, a different experiment. They had obtained a hyperfine structure for H2 plus. Uh, fortunately, there's a recent uh, effort uh, by this group, Osterwalder et al., uh, including Jungen, who had did a similar measurement in the Rydberg hydrogen molecule. So there is another group um, looking at this problem, and they're about 10 times less accurate than Lundin claimed. So that's some recent activity on, on the hydrogen front. In the theory side, Alex with Patterson and Somerville um, solved the Dirac equation um, for the hydrogen molecular ion and obtained the uh, hyperfine Hamiltonian in an um, analytical form. Experimentally, it had, it had been used in a phenomenological form. That is, you identify the couplings between the different spins and then fit the constants. And Alex's work had come before that, actually, uh, building on the work Frosch and Foley had done for the, the diamagnetic case. Um, but this important paper um, really laid the groundwork for uh, theoretical studies ab initio. And later, Alex and I looked at this mass effect in H2+, plus, the analog of that kappa term, uh, and the usual Born-Oppenheim approximation, the nuclei move in the, the field generated by the electrons um, in that picture. We looked at the back action going beyond that of, of the, actual, the motion of the nuclei um, on that electron uh, wave function. And this is really now work that Callahan had done with Alex um, in, in the 70s. Interesting new development is that Korobov has revisited this calculation and used the, non, the, the variational approach that Gordon mentioned. He actually gets good agreement with our earlier perturbation theory approach. So even though we had to wait um, almost 15 years, it's nice to have uh, independent confirmation. Um, there are still remaining discrepancies uh, having to do with spin flip transitions, and I think Vladimir is looking at those. So why not HD plus? Why not look for the Deuteron quadruple moment? This is a problem that has come up now and then in this uh, study. And um, it has been calculated now by Korobov and collaborators. They find it's about a 10 kilohertz effect. And there's some new experiments that are being done, which is other good news on the H2 plus front, by Schiller's group, and, uh, which Gordon showed some of the transition frequencies. Um, and they can't get to this precision, this 10 kilohertz yet. So why not D2 plus to look for the Deuteron quadruple moment? Maybe. There's actually an experiment um, by that same collaboration, Osterwalder, where they looked at just recently uh, the D2 plus hyperfine structure. It's the first determination that I know of of the D2 plus hyperfine structure from Rydberg D2. And so it's a comparison between our results and, and theirs that can be performed. Also, interestingly, Avine mentioned H2D plus and there's also D2H+. Plus. These are being measured uh, experimentally, too, in an exciting development uh, by a group in Kuhn where they get an experimental precision of 20 kilohertz. That's way ahead of theory. Uh, even The agreement's better than Avine mentioned for the transitions she was talking about, but still, it's quite far away. Nevertheless, um, this is at the level where you might be able to see a Deuteron quadrupole moment effect in H2D+. Plus. Um, so that's an exciting uh, potential development. And in the future, there'll be sympathetic cooling, sympathetic molecular ion cooling. So I'm looking forward to uh, uh, a resurgence again in this in interest in this, this high precision, hyperfine structure. And uh, um, with that, I'll turn myself over to questions um, and uh, conclude my talk. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs>